going on, guys? This is Bruce Matson, your host of the show, Metro Scout Fantasy Football, the show that talks about all things fantasy, redraft, dynasty, DFS, all of it, just all of it. If that's something you're interested in, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, tell your homies. I got a special show for you. I'm not going over a player, P. I'm just doing a different exercise just to give you different content, really. But I'm going to run through the top 25 players in Superflex ADP. That's DynastyLeagueFootball.com's Superflex ADP. If you want to go check it out, go there. But, but I'm technically giving you the first two rounds free, plus a guy, plus a dude. So hang on to the show. Listen, you get ADP right here. But I'm going here through each player, and I'm going to read off their name. And I'm going to give you one or two sentences, maybe three, off the cuff. Of what I think. This is not in-depth analysis. I don't really have to do that. Considering I cut up multiple videos on these guys. All draft season. Going in-depth. On every single one of these players. I feel like I'm entitled to have a little fun. And that's what we're going to do today on the show. Stick with me. So number one. Super flex. Obviously Trevor Lawrence. Generational talent. Above Andrew Luck. Better than him. Peyton manning S. Type of prospect, Trevor Lawrence, 101 without a doubt. Number two, Justin Fields. I feel like big media, NFL media is undervaluing him. He's going to be tremendous for Superflex due to rushing production. Good arm, people sleeping on him. Number two, Justin Fields. Three, Jamar Chase, alpha wide receiver, production, athleticism. Everything you want. Number four, Najee Harris. Big running back who can move, catch the ball in the backfield, be good in PPR, and will be a three-down workhorse. Number five, Trey Lance. Konami code will run through faces, also can sling rockets all over the field. Great for super flex. Number six, Travis ETN, speed, burst, dangerous in daylight with loose spaces, can catch the ball out of the backfield in the flat, check down artist. Number seven, Zach Wilson, high upside, low floor, high developmental prospect, going to be a jet. Number eight, Kyle Pitts, generational talent at tight end. We're going to see if that matters here in a few years. Athleticism's there. Ability's there. Ball tracking's there. Route running's there. Elite level wide receiver. We'll see what happens. Worth it at the draft spot. Number nine, Javante Williams. Good size. Good lateral ability. Can catch the ball in the backfield. Three down workhorse. Will be fantasy football relevant. And... Should be a starter for his NFL team. Number 10, Mac Jones. Underrated going into draft season. Starting to get overrated going into the draft. Good mental processing ability. Can sling rockets. Very comparable to Joe Burrow. Will not have the rushing production. Will have a limited floor in fantasy. Number 11, Devonta Smith. Size concerns, obviously. Age concerns. Breakout age concerns. Production concerns. However... Heisman season, hyper productive, great on tape. I feel like he's going to be a middle of the road player with some thousand yard seasons and some down years as well. Number 12, Rashad Bateman. Sad about his pro day, him coming in at 190 instead of being in the 210 range. Still, good athleticism, savvy route runner, very good technician, one of the best players in this draft, hyper productive. 13. Jalen Waddle. Dude has the hit factor. He has speed to burn. He's very explosive, has ball skills. Tyreek Hill, art type, not comparison. Very good prospect. Could be the best Alabama wide receiver to come out in the last couple years. 14. Rondell Moore. I love this guy. Early breakout at age 18. Hyper athletic. Injuries played a role in his production profile. Shorter wide receiver, size limitations, but can do everything on the field. 15, Kenneth Gainwell. Some limitations on tape when it comes to his rushing ability. Good athleticism, can catch the ball in the backfield. Can be an Austin Eckler 
when it comes to his upside, but downside could be just a role player in a committee. 16, Terrace Marshall, one of the few wide receivers who will be drafting the top 100. It'll be over the 200 pound mark. Good speed, good length, can get downfield. Shared the field with a tremendous core at LSU. Has a lot of upside. Can't wait to see his draft capital. 17, Elijah Moore. Hyper productive from a market share standpoint. Early breakout age at age 19. Good athleticism. Size is not there. He has the size of a slot receiver. There are less slot guys breaking out from a fantasy football perspective than what we like. That could hinder him. However, from production standpoint, from age standpoint, from athleticism standpoint, he looks like he has the making of a guy that could at least be productive at the next level. Tylen Wallace, 18. Love his skills, love his play. Very versatile. Can get downfield. Good ball skills. Speed. Came back this year and still had a large ownership of the passing offense with over 30%. Chuba Hubbard. Started off strong and ended off pretty bad this year has some good things on tape long speed it's gonna be interesting where he goes and if he can carve out a role at the nfl level michael carter been a big riser throughout draft season he shared the backfield with javante williams and was still productive he looks like a guy who could put things together and part of a committee could be fantasy relevant if given the opportunity let's see where he gets drafted at amon raw st brown very crafty, very nuanced, solid route runner, does everything well. I wish he was more sudden, and I wish he had more long speed. Jamar Jefferson, really sad about his pro day. The numbers don't lie. He's a slug athlete. Production-wise, broke out as a freshman. Showed that he can catch the ball early in his college career, but the numbers dipped. On field, on play, he plays faster than what he measured at, which is a trick bag when it comes to our analysis for him. Diami Brown, 23, Diami Brown. Deep threat, good ball skills, can make things happen. Value at where he's getting drafted at. A player that if you had to bet who would outperform their ADP, Diami Brown would be the guy. Tommy Brown has an early breakout age and has been productive the last two seasons of his collegiate career. Number 24, Pat Frermuth. Baby Gronk has been putting up an impressive highlight reel at Penn State throughout his career. Counting stats aren't there mainly because he played at Penn State and two, he's a tight end. However, he's got the potential to put it together after a couple years of development. Last but not least, 25, Trey Sermon. Good wiggle, good vision, runs with some tenacity, has good contact balance, but doesn't have the long speed or burst. Very limited there. However, he tested with good burst. I don't see good burst on film. Trey Sermon is... A very volatile player with a high ceiling and a very low floor. That's it for the top 25. Just giving you a quick rundown of each player. Just a couple sentences. I, toward the end, I gave, gave a little bit more because I was starting to get in the flow of things. But it is what it is. That's what I got. And if you want to know more about what I think on these players, check out the player profiles I got on the channel and the archives. But this was just a fun exercise I decided to do, give you guys some content as we head into the draft. As you all know, once the draft happens, I'm going to be doing more breakdowns of how these players fit in their teams, probably player by player or round by round the two, however that goes. I'm going to be coming at you pretty quick. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring the bell so you don't miss an episode. Thank you, guys. I'll catch you next time.